I'm Kristen Andre, founder and chief strategist of Andre Consulting Group. I founded my company almost 10 years ago because I love helping people not only succeed, but thrive in their careers and their lives. So many times I meet amazing people who have so much more potential than what they're utilizing. As I engage with them, there seems to be a common theme, the limits they place on themselves. Throughout this podcast series, we're going to visit some incredible people, people who have created more intentional lives for themselves, those who've had that no limits moment where they chose to grow and they put things in motion to help them do so. We will focus on how you can break through limits. We will equip you with strategies to help you lead a more intentional life, and we will have a lot of fun along the way. So let's dive in. Welcome everyone to the No Limits with Kristen Andre podcast. We are here today with Dara Brustein, who is the founder of the Life by Design, Not by Default Summit. Very exciting. So glad to have you here. But Thank you. Aside from all that, author, just all around, do it all, founded a few companies, all, all kind of stuff. So tell us a little bit about, about you. Thanks, Kristen. Nice to be here. Uh, you hit it on the head. I am a two-time founder. I own a credit card processing company with my twin brother, which we have grown over the last decade into 38 states. Nice. And I founded, as you were talking about with me before, we went on air, network under 40 and historically network over 40 to bring together young professionals. And we do that for about 30,000 folks in four mid-market U.S. cities. And I am a children's book author and working on my next book about lifestyle design. Oh, lifestyle design for children. No, the next one will be for grown-ups. Oh, I was about to say, that's fantastic, because I think I know some kids that could use that. Yeah, no, the first one was Kids on Financial Literacy. This is Adults on Designing Your Life and Building a Network to Support It. Oh, my gosh. So you've got your hands in a lot of different things, in which I know we, I was telling you before we went on air that, you know, I have a number of friends like, oh, you got to meet Dara. Dara. She's, but you're always on the go. So, so yeah, what part of my lifestyle design is to travel. <laughs> we, we just because you're it's obviously for those of you guys watching live stream, we are via Skype today because she is jet setting as you normally do, which is part of that life by design, like you said. So exactly. what, what what created this entrepreneurial spirit with you? For me, I think it was something that was always inherent that I had been in the back of my mind my whole life thinking I want to start a business. I want to start a business. While the word entrepreneur was one I didn't know, and it felt very highfalutin once I learned it, it seemed like, oh, well, that's for really smart people. They're people with giant businesses or, you know, all these things I had in my head that were associated with it. But I had always had this inclination to have my own business and was one of those kids who was starting little ones at home and on my porch my whole life trying to sell things oh, yeah. to kids and friends and parents and their friends. And I always knew that, but it really was after graduating from college and going through the motions of what I was told to do, right. which, you know, get good grades, get a job, work the nine to five, do all the other things like get the house, have the partner happily ever after. And those things weren't working for me. I graduated from Emory in 2006 and I came out into a really unsteady economy and in the course of three years, I had taken three jobs, been successful in each of them, but in each case, the company wasn't doing well because of the economy, and I lost each of them, and then subsequently had bought a home thanks to a restraining order against my landlord at the age of 23. Oh, and goodness gracious. None of, the, none of the things that I was checking the boxes for were really working the way that I thought. So it was then that I really put my finger back on the pulse of what was that as a kid that I was really ruminating on about having my own business and a lot of the fables I had been told of it's more stable to work for someone else than it is to work for yourself started to become fallacies to me. And I started to think, well, what if I took my, the reins into my own hands and went after it? I think that's awesome because I, I, I spent some time in corporate as well and, you know, ran a, a financial firm and and love what I was doing. But it just wasn't I wasn't designing it. It was, you know, kind of to your point, it was it just kind of was happening. It was checking off all the boxes. You, you, you get the job. Yeah do whatever you're supposed to do. In my case, get married, have kids, all those type of things, buy a house. But sometimes it just isn't enough or it doesn't really fulfill what you want your life to look like. Exactly. I think we're all wired in different ways. And if we just listen to common knowledge or common ideas around what our happiness and our fulfillment should look like, right. then often it doesn't align. And that's where some of the harder work comes in to discern and assess what is it that really might light you up and fulfill you. And then how do you move towards that? So for you, 
What, what is that light you up thing? What is it? It's a number of things, but I mean, part of it is travel. Cause for me, I had to really diagnose what are my values mm-hmm. and then how do I make sure my life integrates with those values. And for me, some of my biggest values are perpetual learning. Cause for me, I think if you're not learning and growing, then you're disintegrating or dying. Absolutely. So how can I engineer my life to be such that I'm constantly learning? And so whether that's making sure I'm surrounding myself with people who encourage that and bring that out in me, if it's constantly reading. And for me, travel really is about learning because the more I put myself in other environments and new experiences, the more it creates, not only sparks creativity for me because you put yourself out of your comfort zone and you see the ways that people live, but it also is a natural place to learn when you're in new environments and it is putting you outside of your comfort zone. So those are just a few of them. And in, even also from the professional arena, I feel like I'm constantly learning and growing when I'm taking on new challenges and starting new companies or pushing the growth edges of the ones that I already have. Yeah. I think that's awesome. And so many people don't listen to that. You know, it, it is kind of a life by default most of the time for a large number of the population. And I think folks like you or myself who decide to do something different and launch their own their own company or companies it, it really that's the reason i mean certainly we want to be successful financially and design our life the way we want it to be but it's really just so we can be us and get to do the things that that are more true to our to be in authentic to live in our values and honestly for me a lot i'm sure it is for you it's just having fun because I, I see so many people that are miserable Yes. And your point is so valid about the financial piece that the money is important, but money is a tool. Money is a tool, I believe, to get you the freedom of time to spend it the way that you want to create that happiness that you're talking about. And we're all familiar with the studies that talk about, at least in the U.S. context, that once you hit an average of $70,000 in your average income, then there's no more or less happiness that comes as a result of that. And that's an average. But so something that I really recommend folks do is that you project out and think, let's say five or 10 years out, what would my ideal life look like and map that out. But then next to it, assign a dollar value to each item and say, what does it cost to do and access each of those things? And then annualize it and say, what does that mean I have to make on an annual basis to achieve that? Because what it does is it takes away this idea of, oh, happiness is at some dollar value that's so far off and so hard to achieve. And for me, at least, it made it really clear that the amount of money that I needed to live a happy life by my terms was way less than I would have imagined otherwise. You know, that's so funny because I, I've i done the exact same thing. And I, I revisited it recently because about 20 years ago in my career, I had made this 100 things to do before you die list. Some of it's places to visit. Some of it's adventures. Some of it was financial you know, amounts of money I wanted to make. And when I revisited the list recently, the two, there were a couple milestones that were just massive in terms of revenue. Um, and when I started looking at it recently, it wasn't going to take that much to do everything I want to do. Like if I put pen to paper, which I did, and figured out house I want to live in, the trips I want to take, all the, the colleges for paying for college for my girls, it was less money than what 20 years ago I thought, oh, I want to make X. So it, it was interesting. It was, you know, it was still a decent amount of money, but it it wasn't as this big number that I had out there that somebody, I guess, at some point had mentioned that's a good amount. Right, which makes it so much more attainable because what I then like to do is reverse engineer my career or my business right. specifically and say, well, if it's this much annually, then it's this much per month. And if it's this much per month, what do I need to do in my business on a smaller scale basis to get to that amount so that it's kicking off that amount of income for me to live that? And then once you hit that point, it's on you and no one else to then say, I've achieved that. Do I feel like I want to change this or iterate it at all? because that's your choice. And at that point, you're like, I, it's fulfilled. I can celebrate that. That's wonderful. But it's not this constant chase. So what do you what do you say to people that kind of are doing that default thing? What they the shoulda, coulda, oughta type of thing. It's, you know, mom or dad want us to do this or my friends think I should be doing this. I mean, what do you what do you say to those people? I mean, first, I'd tell them to really do a reflection and analyze, is this working for me? And do I feel fulfilled? Do I feel like this is the life that is in alignment with who I really am? And if the answer is no, or I don't think so, that's probably a no. And then it's really about 
are you willing to take the chance to recognize that you have one life and like it's your life right. and that the people around you really just want you to be happy and that often they're working off of constructs that were handed to them too and that when you are the person who is brave enough to go and live the life that you really want to live it usually positively reflects for other people to encourage them to do it too because when we're staying small it's not helping anyone else and actually it's holding everyone else around us back as well right and so many people you know when in in my practice and my about half my practice is is coaching clients and it's business strategy and accountability and you know all the head stuff and and all the you know the things you're talking about but so many people it's like they're almost trying to find something wrong like when they first come to me it's like oh this isn't working and that isn't working and it's not often that we have to make these massive changes it's just little things that aren't in alignment with where they want to go or what they want to be or the amount of activity they're putting into finding that that good space for them and your point is right that one i think when you have any of those triggers saying like this isn't working that's the place to stop complaining and start leaning in to take some action right but secondarily when you start taking action i think it can feel really overwhelming to think well i'm not going to change my entire life and it doesn't have to be about that sometimes it's finding one place and saying what could i do to incrementally make positive change here and just do one bit at a time and then you can often find that when you get a little momentum each part feels a little more doable as opposed to looking at all the aspects of your life and saying i want to improve my fitness and my finances and my relationships and my love life and my business and that's crazy like that's a lot to do at once yep. so one thing at a time i think that's a huge point because you know we all have I read basically if there is a professional or personal development book out there, I'm reading it. And we do. We I mean, we all know we coach around all those areas, as you mentioned, health and fitness, um, financial, spiritual relationships. And we all look at those areas. But I think that's an excellent point you make is we don't have to fix everything at once. It's a more a matter of taking small steps to move all the pieces forward at the same time. All right. So you mentioned earlier that um, you you've got a summit coming up and we're going to we're going to take a short break in a second. But after the after that, I want to dive into really what that's going to do for people. So what made you create this life by design summit that you have? It was pretty organic in the sense that I had spent about six months recognizing that there was a new iteration of my career coming. It was just this intuitive instinct that I had. And so I spent that six month period diving into what is that, what could be next after the things that I've already created. And the thing that kept coming to the top for me was this question I was asked over and over again, which is how do you live the life that you do? And what I recognized that people meant by that was how do you live a life of your own design and how do you not live the status quo life that so many others fall prey to? Right. So I recognized that what if I took all of the tools, methods, resources, strategies, that I had used over the past decade of learning and taking courses and reading books and you know having mentors and coaches and doing all these things. And how do I disseminate them to a mass group of people in a way that was approachable and would use all of the tools that I had been able to learn over a decade and give them that blueprint and roadmap and also do it at no cost to them. Oh my God, that's awesome. That's so awesome. So it, you know, a lot of times people want to make a change and the tools, I think, is a big deal because if you're not someone like one of the two of us that just is going to read everything and try to figure out those. I mean, most of for me and we talked about this for those of you guys watching live stream, you can tell I'm a little bit older than Miss Dara here. But but, you know, for for those of us that, that have been doing this a long time, it's trial and error. It, a lot of this and, you know, my life 20 years ago was definitely by default, without question. It was just checking things off the list. And I feel like now it, it took me a while to learn. So I love the fact that you've got this this summit out there that people can learn all this. So we're going to take a break for a second. And when we come back, we're going to have Dara dive in a little bit more to what this Life by Design Summit looks like and how it might be helpful for you. So we'll be right back. Hey, everyone.
everyone, it's Kristen. Be sure and visit my website at www.andregroup.com. That's www.andree group.com. And while you're there, be sure to download my white paper, Top 10 Reasons Your Business Isn't Growing Fast Enough. Now get out there and create your no limits moment. Welcome back, everyone, to No Limits with Kristen Andre. We are here with Dara Brustein, who is coming to us via Skype from her one of her many locations among your travels, which is awesome. Part of this whole life by design, not by default. Um, so you were before the break, we were talking about the virtual summit you have coming up. So tell us more about that, because it sounds it sounds awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. It'll air September 12th to 14th, and it's completely free. And it's over the three days, it has three primary headings. Day one, it's kicked off by the legendary Deepak Chopra. Oh, no and, way. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, and that's awesome. End, yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't know about this ahead of time. I'm like, wait a minute. What? Very yeah, cool. Yeah, and the end of day one is closed by my close friend, Ronnie Turioff, who's a former NBA All-Star and two-time Olympian. And day one is also in the middle. You've got 15 other incredible speakers who are talking about how to intentionally design your life how to bust up the status quo, how to figure out what success really looks like for you, how to get over any hurdles or roadblocks along the way and start mapping that out. So day one is absolutely incredible. Very day cool. two was kicked off by one of our local celebrities, Kat Cole in Atlanta. Yeah, she yeah. focus brands and she talks about, well, day two as a whole is all about creating your career or your business to integrate into what it is you designed and then fund that life. So Kat kicks off that day talking about being a nonconformist and how to care about things that are big enough to matter, but small enough to have an impact on and a number of other really important topics. And we've got some incredible speakers that day talking about business and career. And then day three is kicked off by one of my favorite thought leaders, Adam Grant, who is a best-selling author and Wharton professor and viral TED speaker and closed off by Jen Sincero, who's the author of the You Are a Badass series. And day three is all about how do you create a network and a community to support you and the visions that you have for yourself. That is three packed day. I mean, those are some big name speakers. Yeah, and we've got a total of 45 and every speaker will go on in a normal agenda way like you'd be at a traditional summit, but it's all streaming online. Okay. And if the speaker goes on, their session will be available until midnight Eastern time. So if you miss because you're in a meeting or at work and want to catch it during lunch or after hours, you can do that as well. Oh, that's so cool. All right, so how did you... I mean, there. I'm impressed. That's that's a big, big, big day. It just, you know, sometimes I'll go to workshops or seminars, and I've had the good fortune of hearing a lot of fantastic speakers. But like we talked about a little bit during the break, is sometimes you'll go and you'll absorb all this stuff, and then you just walk away and go, "That was fantastic," and you don't do anything with it. So, what is what is your hope, and what are you really wanting people that attend your virtual summit to take away or to do? Well, I think it depends where they are in their personal journey. And the reason that I packed so much content in is I wanted to be able to create move like room for people depending where they are. Because if you are in a life that you believe you're living completely other people's versions of success and you're chasing other people's dreams and it's all status quo, then day one's gonna be super powerful for you because it might be some of the first times you're really considering what is it I want and how do I start doing exercises like reflecting into the future what I want and assigning dollar values to that or doing what I call a eulogy or a deathbed exercise where you're thinking when I reflect back on my life, what am I going to want to say about it? And then how do you start engineering your life to fit into that? Or, you know, what are some of the limiting beliefs or mental blocks or actual blocks that I have to get there? Like that'll be a lot of work for someone who's just starting versus someone who's maybe done a lot of that work already. Those will be really great reminders and maybe what they'll love is Deepak's help on mindfulness and meditation or someone else's on living in flow or, you know, there's a number of things that might be useful, whereas day two and three might be more powerful for them of, okay, I have a business, but how do I start taking that or my personal brand or my work in my company to another level? Or day three might be really powerful for them saying, you know, I'm not surrounding myself with the people that are elevating me and how do I start doing that? And how do I tactically really start thinking through that? So there's so much in there for different folks that if you watch all of it, it's going to be a ton and fantastic. And you can take a lot of notes and hopefully you can, like we talked about in segment one, go back and dissect where are the first pieces I want to start moving on. But then also too, if someone's thinking, wow, this is a lot of content and I can't digest it all at once, we created one option 
for those folks called the Lifetime Access Pass, where if you want to start accessing it immediately and forever, you can buy all of the content and have oh, awesome. the 20 hours and 40 plus speakers available to you forever. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, because it seems like, I mean, one of the things I, I that I'm hearing that is is unique about this, and this is a big mantra of mine in coaching, is you got to meet people where they are. And um, with the different days, the three different days you're talking about, it, it really seems like you've got an option for wherever you come in, which I don't I don't see that with a lot of summits. So, I mean, kudos to you for creating that. I think it's going to appeal to a pretty, pretty darn broad audience. It's been really powerful because we're getting really close to the summit now. And I've been sending emails out to everyone who registers and we are expecting 10,000. So there's been no shortage oh, that's of emails. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm getting a lot of responses, which have been so beautiful because people are cracking open for me. Here's why I'm coming. And this is where I am in my life. And I really thought the audience was going to be more around uh, my age, which is millennial or even younger at Gen Z, because that's who my community is. Right. What I'm finding is that it's that, but it's also people who are up to I'm retired. Yeah. And I feel like I've never chased my dreams and I want to do that now. And that it really is never too late. So I'm finding that it's people in all stages of transitions and all stages of their lives, which is really cool to see that no matter what your age, we all have a desire to be our best and be happy. And I completely agree with you because I'm, I'm a Gen Xer. And, you know, if I think about the Gen X, um, Gen X generation and even the boomers before me, I mean, we're the people that boomers are retired or retiring. Gen X, we've got 10, 15 years left to work for a lot of us. And I had this conversation with a friend of mine last week who's in his early 50s and not, I mean, fantastic job. Very, you know, great executive position, highly compensated you outwardly you look and you're like, man, you got things going on. I mean, he's happy, loves his loves his hobbies and things like that, but not fulfilled. And, you know, that was the conversation I had with him is he's like, sometimes I just want to pack it up and sell the house and move away. And I was like, but you, where, what are you going to? You, you got to make sure you're running towards something and not away from something. And I feel like for that generation, for our generation and for probably a lot of the boomers, we were so used to being told, here's what it's supposed to be that we've never really sat back to figure that out and to create what does that look like? I mean, I was fortunate enough to do that about 10 years ago when I launched my firm and I've been able to design life the way I want it. But so many people, I think in the X and the boomer generation, they just didn't. They haven't really stopped to think about it. Absolutely. And I think everything you said is on point. And there's another piece to it that I'm coming to recognize is that even when you design it, like I've been designing my life, like I said, for the past decade, and I'd say over the past about five years, I've really been actively living the design that I had set out to live. Right. Even when you do that, I've come to realize that you sometimes learn that what you designed is still not it. You got to retweak it. it. Yep. You've got to pivot a little and iterate and yep. that that's okay too. And it keeps you intentional about it. And that doesn't mean that it's a fail. You know, a lot of times people are like, oh, I tried that. It didn't work. I'm like, well, maybe that wasn't what it was supposed to be. Maybe it was supposed to look a little bit different. So you do have to be able to pivot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So how can people find this, find this summit here? And we'll be sure and post, we'll be sure and post some links because we're going to make sure people know how to get here. So where, where do they go? It's lifebydesignsummit.com. Oh, very, very tough to remember there. I like it. Lifebydesignsummit.com. So tell me what you feel like, what would be your ideal uh, I guess maybe, I don't want to say takeaway, but what's your ideal experience for, for somebody listening who's going to go on and sign up for the summit? I just hope that they come open and open to whatever it is that they're looking to get out of it or that even they set an intention of this is what I'm hoping to gain and then that they commit to taking some action on whatever that is once it's done. And what I'm seeing a lot of people do is invite some friends so they can hold each other accountable and say, Hey, listen, we both listened or all of us listened. These are our takeaways. Let's check in with each other. And even if they're very different to just say, this is what I'm committing to do. And then let's follow up about it so that you're not on your own and life just doesn't get back into its routine and you forget about it. Because that's so, yeah, it's, I think that's great. I, I love the idea of, of friendship. I'm all over accountability. And I will say the biggest goals I have for myself my closest friends and my closest family members know about them and they hold me to it. And they, if I start wiggling away from them or not putting forth the effort I've promised myself to put forth, they'll kind of 
help keep me in check, but they also encourage you too. So I feel like, you know, for a lot of people, if this is the first time they've really sat down to think about what they want life to look like, it'd be great to have somebody to hold them accountable for one, but two, just to share it with. Absolutely. Because it, it's so true that you might hit a point where you're thinking like, wow, if these are new ideas. You probably are going to want someone to listen and bounce ideas off of. And it's often easier. And sometimes I find more fulfilling to do that with people who get it and yeah. they're yeah. on the wavelength as opposed to you trying to teach them as well. So right. doing it. And if they're sitting through the summit with you, they get it. And if you've got like-minded friends, it's awesome. You know, I always like sharing ideas with people. Like anytime I've had a new Um, idea, and I'm sure you've done this, a new idea for a business or a different type of direction I may take the business or a different product or service I may add, I'll run it by like the people close to my tribe. And, you know, it's funny because when when you hit on something that like you really are feeling it and they go, oh, yeah, I could totally see you doing that. And then you're like, okay, yep, this might be the thing. So I think that'll give them an opportunity to be able to do that. Yeah, actually, it reminds me of one of the tools that we share before the summit starts, which is an exercise to interview your friends to help you understand things about yourself that perhaps you're not seeing. So for someone who's designing for maybe the first time or redesigning their life, it's a series of questions that you do an interview, whether virtually or in person with your friends or people who care about you and know you in different capacities and say things like, when am I at my best? When am I at my worst? What is something you know about me that maybe I don't know about myself and a series of others? And then you can start analyzing those and putting them together and even finding any patterns that you can suss out. And then that can help you to say like, okay, what could I do with that information? So again, it's like taking these different data points. And I think we often underestimate how much our friends and our community really see us for who we truly are in ways that sometimes we don't see in ourselves. I think that's awesome. That's, I really like those questions a lot, a lot, lot. Okay. So I'm very, very intrigued. We're going to, we're going to pause for a minute. When we come back, we're going to come up with a challenge for our listeners, everybody listening. And we'll also remind you again, how to get to the summit. So we'll be back in just a few. everyone check out my podcast no limits with Kristen andre on tuesday nights at 7 30. we will tackle the things holding you back and the limits you set on yourself and equip you with some strategies to lead more intentional lives podcast launches every tuesday at 7 30 p.m on facebook.com slash andre group that's facebook.com slash a-n-d-r-e-e group we'll see you there Welcome back, everyone, to No Limits with Kristen Andre. We are wrapping up our time with Dara Brewstein. So, Dara, thank you so much for being with us today from sunny, sunny Miami. Doesn't, well, you can't see the sun in the background, but I know it's sunny. I'm feeling it. All right. So, before the break, we were you were telling us about your summit. So, remind everybody again how they sign up for it because I'm I'm signing up. This sounds fantastic. So, it's go ahead. Tell tell them how to get there. The 14th is the live summit and it's lifebydesignsummit.com. Okay. So you'll have three days of fantastic speakers, great content. I think it'd be a great way, no matter where you are in your journey is what I thought was so interesting is, I mean, you've got something for everybody. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. So we chatted a little bit during the break and during every episode, for those of you guys who watch us or listen to us each week, you know, I am big on challenges and helping people push through limits. So every episode, we ask our guests to help issue a challenge to our listeners on something they can do to push past some limits they have in their life. So Dara's got a great one for us today. So tell us, tell us how you want to challenge our listeners. Thank you. So I call it the give it forward challenge. And it's actually a challenge that I started publicly about a year ago after doing it privately for a couple of years. And it's pretty straightforward. And I think really activating for you. It's 30 days, no small feat. And once a day for each of those 30 days, I ask you to go into the world in some small way, offer your service in some way, shape or form to someone. And what I mean by that is simply like if Kristen and I were having an offline conversation and today was my first day or one of my 30 days, I'd say, Kristen, I've committed to giving in some way to someone every day for 30 days with no strings attached. Is there some way I can be helpful to you today? And Kristen could say anything that she wants. And ultimately it's for me to make an effort, but it's not for me to feel like there's an expectation to accomplish it. And 
in my doing of this, a lot of things have happened and a lot of results have occurred because of it. So everything, questions have come, everything from, can you help me play on the top 100 golf courses in the United States to, can you help me find a babysitter tonight? Mine just canceled and everything in between. But as a result, what I found when I put this out into the world to help empower other people to do it is how much people, one, realized how much you really have to offer that is valuable to other people, how sometimes small things like just listening and asking create such a closeness and connection with someone, how it can really help you dive deeper into your community and reinvest in relationships that you already have or kickstart new ones. And also just how when you go into your day with a giving lens, rather than what I think so many of us often do, which is just get through the day and check the boxes off and think about what we have to do rather than what can we do for others, it really shifts your lens and for me, it gives me so much energy. And then lastly, I think it's just really cool to see what comes up and what people could use help with and how you can be a service. I really, so you're asking them, you're, you're physically saying, what can I help you with? I do, but I found that people who take this challenge on have done it in a multitude of ways. Some just put it out on Facebook and they make it more passive and say, hey, you know, first 30, I'll do one per day. Others do more of like a invisible pay it forward, like they'll buy someone at Starbucks the coffee and line behind them. It just depends. But I really like it as an as a way to connect with people. Right. So I'll send a text message, I'll make a phone call, I'll send a personal email. But I really like the idea that if I spend this five minutes a day intentionally having a conversation with someone about it. Because also too, sometimes I find that people need a little coaching through it to say, you know, what is it that I want? People are not used to being asked. They're often a little caught off guard and think there is a string attached, which you have to emphasize that it's not. And you can explain what this is that you've committed to doing and why. And I think that helps people feel more inclined to be open to it. And I think it it teaches me and it's taught a lot of other people a lot about receptivity yourself and that willingness to be open to when people want to help you. Because I think one, giving is not something that is often championed, but two, the idea, especially I think as women, we're often encouraged to do things on our own and men too, frankly, that we're taught to be people who can handle everything. And so when someone wants to offer to help, it can feel hard to say yes to So it teaches us a lot on both sides. I love that. And what's kept sticking out to me when you said it was connection, because I I feel like when we do those things, my first thought was, oh, pay for the Starbucks. And that's an easy thing. It really is. All of us can go and pay for the person in front of us, behind us in line, whatever. That's an easy thing to do. Not that that's bad. However, what was intriguing to me when you were talking through it was the connection piece was the ask. Because one, it is hard to receive help for a lot of us, but it's and it's hard to ask for help. So I, I like the piece about just putting it out there, whether it's passive on Facebook and saying, I'll take my first 30, or whether it's asking somebody via text, via phone call, what have you. I, I'm intrigued by the ask portion. I think that's awesome. So, yeah, it's a nice challenge for yourself too, I think, to like put yourself up to that and feel brave enough to say it to someone and see, like leave the space for them to answer. And it, I think it's fine to say, hey, I'm doing a 30 day challenge and here's what I'm doing because, you know, it, you don't want to be the one that goes, so how can I help you today? That that may seem not disingenuous, but I guess it could, but yeah. Yeah. So I think when someone understands this is why you're doing it, then they realize that there, that there is no like ulterior motive. Right. And they also may think, hey, this is kind of cool. I may want to try that myself. So. Well, that's exactly it, that when someone says, what can I do in return? It really is about, this isn't about reciprocity. So if there's anything you can do, it's give it forward yourself. Okay. All right. So Dara Brewstein, what can we do? What can I do for you? You can tune into lifebydesignsummit.com. I did not know you were going to say that I can definitely do. I will commit to doing that. So thank you so much for being with us today. This was awesome. And I'm very excited about your summit. So lifebydesignsummit.com. Be sure and check it out. September 12th through the 14th. Is that right? Perfect. All right. Well, thank you again for being with us. And until next time, everybody, keep pushing through those limits.